Does your 78 to 88 Cutlass have the boring granny style gauge cluster like this one here? And you're interested in swapping it over to the much cooler rally pack, but you're not sure how to do it? Well, I'm going to show you exactly how it's done. I suppose you have some games. Hey guys, welcome back to Classic G Body Garage. I'm sitting here inside my 80 Cutlass Supreme Brome. Now, this video has been requested by so many of my YouTube viewers, subscribers, and also my followers on Facebook. This video involves switching over your 78 to 88 Cutlass from this style gauge cluster over to the Rally Pack cluster. Now, there are so many reasons why you want to make this upgrade to your Cutlass. For starters, hey, it is a whole lot cooler looking just having the cool circle gauges. Also, secondly, to monitor your engine because you have the tachometer, the temperature, the oil, the fuel, and the volts. Now, your standard gauge cluster just has a bunch of dummy lights. And us car guys, we're no dummies because we like to monitor our engines, find out what is going on under the hood because this style cluster is only going to tell you what's wrong or the lights are going to light up only when something is wrong. Now with the rally cluster, you can monitor your temperature, your oil pressure, your volts, and of course your gas gauge. Well, both clusters have that, but then you have the cool tachometer as well. So definitely a good reason why you want to uh, make this upgrade to your cutlass. Now I'm going to show you exactly what it takes to swap it over from the standard style to the gauge style. Now many people think all you do is take the dashboard apart, pull the standard cluster out, drop the new cluster in, and it works well that is definitely wrong now the cluster does drop right into place it'll bolt right up however nothing works so what I'm gonna do is I already have one of my other cars pulled apart I'll show you guys what it looks like behind the uh, the bezel right here and the differences in the electronics that are behind the dashboard here as well as the upgrades that need to be made under the hood as well all right so the first thing you're going to want to do is remove the cluster now you do that by removing the outer dash bezel which is this piece right here now it is really easy to do it's only held on with uh, seven screws uh, there's four running along the bottom and then there's three hiding behind the wood grain inserts which are along the top right there once you get the wood grain inserts out and to remove these you do not want to use a flat blade screwdriver and start prying along these edges because you're going to either damage this piece right here or you're going to damage the wood grain piece itself so mainly what you do is grab a hold of the wood grain piece the best you can and just start pulling be very very careful because these will crack uh, if you're not uh, careful enough they are held in here's the back side they are held in by spring-loaded clips so once it pops out it just snaps right back in now if you can't grab a hold of it and you don't want to use a screwdriver you can use this hook tool like this and you can get behind there's a little lip that you can get to and just start gently tugging like that and they will pop out of place so this is what it looks like once the gauge cluster is out and then here is the main plug that operates the gauge cluster and this plug right here is what you need to change you either change the plug by splicing in all of the wires or you can pull each one of these electrical connectors out of that plug because they have to be placed into a different port because between the standard cluster and the gauge cluster these wires are configured differently and that is why you cannot simply pull the standard cluster out and drop in the new one and expect it to work because each one of these are in a different location for the gauge cluster so that is one of the differences now i'm going to go walk over to the workbench and i have both clusters sitting on the bench both types of plugs sitting on the bench as well and you can check out the differences all right sitting here on the workbench i have the rally pack right along next to the standard style gauge cluster. Now I wanted to show you the differences in these two. Obviously they look different, but as far as operational uh, features go, very, very different to get these clusters to work. All right, now sitting here on the bench, I also have the main plug 
which I showed you once the dashboard is removed. That is for the gauge style, the rally pack, which I have marked right here. And then this plug is for the standard as well. Now these two plugs physically are the same. Put them right next to each other. Completely identical. However, let me move these sensors out of the way. I'll get to those in a minute. If you note, look at the colors of the wires on the back side of the rally cluster and then the, the uh, standard cluster. The colors, some of them are the same colors, however they are configured differently. For example, see this yellow wire right here on the back side, the bottom side of the rally plug? The yellow wire on the standard plug is on the top. So that is just an example of how those wires are configured differently in each one of these ports. This white wire right here, that is for the tachometer. See, the standard one does not have it. It has a, a green wire in its place for something else that goes on in the standard cluster. So what I'm gonna do is I will put a picture on, my, on the video. You can pause the screen and that'll show you exactly what each one of these ports mean. And then what I will also do is there are websites out there, not my own. I'm gonna link other people's websites that have uh, complete electrical configurations on how these plugs are configured and in order to convert your standard plug into a rally plug what you have to do is you take a little screwdriver and you release the tension on the clips on each one of these the wire will pull out of the back of the plug and then you stick it in the correct slot each one of these ports are numbered so on the image on my screen here it'll show you what color wire goes into what number port So that is the differences in the plugs. Secondly, the sensors, big, big difference. Big difference, as you can see physically. Look at the size difference in some of these. I'm gonna put these next to each other. Here you go, temperature sensor for the rally pack, temperature sensor for the standard, oil pressure sensor for the rally pack, oil pressure sensor for the standard. Now the reason you have to change your sensors is because the standard cluster just has dummy lights. The rally cluster has physical gauges. So the type of sensor that is used is what operates the type of gauge that is used. So these sensors, these fat sensors, these different style sensors are a must to get this analog style sensor to move. These dummy lights, this is what just triggers the dummy light on and off. So very, very uh, important that needs to be changed out when you're putting the rally cluster in your car. Now the third thing is you have the tachometer on the rally cluster. Well you do need some extra wiring to get this tachometer to work like I showed you. Here's the white wire. This is the wire for the tachometer. This white wire leads to this plug right here which then let me spread this out. This is what is called a tack harness. This is a, a, a filter which filters out any uh, distortion from the distributor. So uh, as, the, as the vehicle fires through all of its cylinders, the tachometer doesn't start jumping around each time a spark plug uh, fires. So that filters out any type of static. So this wire, which plugs into this wire right here, runs through the firewall. This is the grommet that goes on the firewall, comes out of the firewall, and then it runs to a plug right here that runs to the tack filter that mounts to the firewall. You keep on following the wire, and then this plugs into the distributor in the port that says tack. So this harness is essential, and I'll show you what the harness looks like when it's on the car, and what these sensors look like when they're on the car, and where to locate the sensors as well. All right, so I mentioned these two sensors, the oil pressure and the temperature sensor. Now these two sensors need to be replaced and I'll show you exactly where they're located on a small block Chevy. And then once I'm done here, I'll go over to my 80 Cutlass Calais and show you where, the, where they're located with a small block Ohls. All right, the temperature sensor, a smaller one. Small block Chevys, they are located on the driver's head. Down on the bottom here, you can see it right there. They got a single green wire going to them, and it's basically just screwed in the side of the driver's side head. 
right in between the two spark plugs, the first and the second spark plug from the fire, from the uh, core support. Green wire right there, following it right up. And now the oil pressure sensor, the big one, the big fat one. That is located right next to the distributor. Let me sneak the camera down here. Pull some wires out of the way. There you go. Sitting right back there, has a single wire going to it. It is a tan, brownish tan wire. And that has a uh, 90 degree brass fitting coming up from the back of the engine block, sitting right next to where the distributor goes down inside the engine block. So that is what you have to replace. You gotta replace the oil pressure and the temperature sensor when you're doing the gauge cluster swap. All right, got the hood up on my 80 Cutlass Calais. Has an Oles 260 in it, and this is gonna be typical of any small block or big block Oles. Much easier to get to in an Oldsmobile, right up front, oil pressure sensor. Right in between the intake manifold and the water pump sticking out right there. There's a 45 degree brass fitting that comes up there. And right here is the temperature sensor right behind the oil pressure sensor. So those two are a lot easier to get to and that's where they're located on an Oles motor. As far as the Chevy 229 V6, they're going to be located in the same location as the small block Chevy that I just showed you. And on a Buick 231 V6, uh, I believe the oil pressure sensor is located down on the side of the block, and I'm not too sure where the uh, temp sensor is, but I believe it's up on the intake as well. But I do not have neither V6 car to show you. But there you go. Small block Chevy, small block Oles, sensor locations. All right, I have the hood up on my 78 Cal A 4-speed. Now, I mentioned the TAC filter harness and how that is hooked up. Here you go. Right on top of the distributor cap, you have TAC and BAT, tachometer and battery. Well, the pink wire right here, that is to power up the distributor. The one next to it is a tachometer wire. That's the brown wire with the brown plug, plugged right into the tachometer port. That wire, you follow it down, goes up to the firewall, goes to the TAC filter, then comes out of the TAC filter, goes to this plug here, Another tannish, whitish, dirty looking wire goes through the firewall, through this uh, grommet right here, which I showed you with that other harness. That feeds down inside and then goes to the white wire on the gauge, uh, main gauge plug. You need this harness or you're gonna end up getting some feedback uh, with the distributor. Uh, the sparking of the spark plugs might make the tack bounce around. You could run a solid wire if you want straight from the uh, tack port right to that white wire uh, you might get lucky but uh, you're better off finding yourself one of these correct harnesses uh, mounted to the firewall just like the factory has it all right guys well that is pretty much how you do it to get from the standard cluster swapped over to the gauge cluster you have a couple things to do and let me go over it once again as far as the sensors go you can see the differences in the sensors this is a dummy light oil pressure sensor. This is a gauge oil pressure sensor. This is a dummy light temperature sensor. This is a gauge temperature, temperature sensor. To get the tachometer working, you need to get yourself a tack harness like this one here. I just went over how it connects to the distributor through this wire here, runs through the tack filter, runs through the grommet and the firewall, and then to that uh, plug right there goes to the white plug or the white wire on the rally plug itself. Now as far as the plug goes, you can do a couple of things. You can take your main plug within your harness, pull out each one of these tabs, reconfigure it to the rally uh, setup here. This is the, the uh, original standard plug, this is the rally plug. Use that image, use that website, that is a nice little how-to website as well. Or you can cut your plug out, splice all these wires into your harness, matching up the colors. Uh, either way, however, I will tell you right now that on a 78 to 88 Cutlass, this plug does not pull out of the dashboard very far at all. It's pretty hard to get to these wires if you're going to start cutting these wires and splicing, or you're going to have to take a whole lot of the dashboard apart. You'll have to take out that black. Uh, hard plastic bezel that the gauge cluster sits in. Once you remove that, 
you can get to this plug a lot easier. What I've done in the past, many, many years ago on my 80 Cutlass, uh, when I was doing this myself, uh, before the internet was even around, I ended up pulling each one of these out and reconfiguring it uh, correctly to the rally pack cluster. So it is possible, it is time consuming, uh, a little bit difficult to do, but like I said, this is not a uh, swap in type deal. You do have to uh, uh, add a few wires, move, some, move a few wires around and change some sensors. Once you get all of that done, your gauges will work. Now, I do have another video that I uh, go over going through these entire gauge clusters and basically rebuilding these clusters because these clusters have a lot of problems as far as these gauges not working, the tachometer not working, just because the age, these things age, uh, all of the electrical connectors inside lose tension and things start getting all crazy. So make sure you watch that video. I will link that video within this one as well. So there you go. You have a complete swap from standard to gauge cluster. Everything you need to make it happen and also how to repair a gauge cluster itself. All right, guys, hopefully I didn't leave anything out. You can always shoot me an email. Leave me a, a message down on the bottom of the video. Uh, give me a call. My number is uh, uh, at the end of the video. And so make sure you're subscribing, checking out all my how-to stuff. I'll link all the how-to uh, the video playlist uh, within this video and also all of the links in the description at the bottom of this uh, video as well. All right, guys, till the next classic G-Body Garage video, keep those G-Bodies rolling.